Hey, what's going on YouTube? So I've been getting some questions lately on my Firestone Ride Ride airbags, as well as some gauges that they've seen on my dash and previous videos. So this week, I'm gonna do hopefully a better video than we've done in the past, showing you the airbags as well as the gauges, and that's coming up. So these two gauges are the gauges that are in question. I've had uh, questions about these, and I said that I would do a video on it, and I'm hoping that you guys will be able to see them. It is very bright outside, and the camera wants to darken things up in here because it's so bright. This gauge on the right shows me the air pressure in my airbags. There's two needles in it, so one needle for left, one needle for right. And then this needle right here, I have an extra air line installed so that I can hook it up to the airbag in the hitch of my Reese Goose box. And I can control it from here with my onboard compressor. So I made a bracket for them to mount to, and it kind of follows the contour of this plastic here. It's just screwed to that. And then I essentially have some all thread that goes through the bottom, goes through both gauges and kind of clamps everything together. There's like a ring clamp that goes around these gauges. I think these are like gauge pods or something like that, that you can put these gauges in. I had to cut the back side out just a little bit to fit some of those air lines in because there are actually air lines and wires for the lights going up to these gauges. Down here, we have a custom panel from Miso Customs that have my switches in them. I had to modify these, these holes right here for these types of switches. These are not quite the same as these tall switches. And these switches here, we have the left bag, the right bag, and then the center one is for the air connection in the bed of my truck for the airbag in the hitch. This is what it looks like from the back side. What you can see one of the gauge pods I had to cut out to get all those air lines in there. It's not the prettiest from this side, but I don't drive from this side, so I never see it. I chose to put the onboard compressor underneath the hood. Here's the intake right here. Yes, it's a TRD intake. Uh, I did a video on this quite a while ago, so go check that out if you want, and to come to come a playlist. Anyway, the air compressor is mounted right here. I don't know if there's other models, maybe like emission stuff that goes here for California models. I'm not sure but there's an open space on mine. There was some studs in there, so I utilized those and bolted a plate to it. You can see one of the studs right here and then the other one right here. And I just utilized that to bolt the plate to it and bolt the air compressor to that. This is where my air compressor hangs out. They have other models that put the air compressors in the grill. I have a transmission cooler in mine. Yes, there are videos on that. I have also seen air compressors that go into this cubby here, which is not a bad location. When I did this project, I never saw those comp other compressor mounts. They also have them underneath the seat of the truck, like underneath the driver's or passenger seat. Uh, personally, I don't really care for having a really loud air compressor underneath the seat of my truck. That's just me, my preference. You can see where I have that extra air truck and that's what the middle switch and the left gauge control. So this is the left rear. If you're wondering what this is, this is for my gooseneck hitch. I tow a gooseneck trailer with my Tacoma, if you did not already know. I just did a video about that hitch last week, so if you'd like, go and check that out. But this is the airbag that's installed. It has a bracket that goes up right here Part of it bolts on the outside of the frame here. And the other piece has kind of like an arm that's curved and bolts right here with this huge bolt. The hole is already in the frame. It's like a square hole. I think it looks, if I remember correctly, it looks kind of like one of these holes that's right here. Uh, this is the bracket for the gooseneck hitch, so it's all bolted together. Then on the bottom, you have a plate here. Yes, you do have to remove or cut off the bump stops that are here. And then you have bolts with brackets 
that clamp everything to here on the springs. For this particular truck, this doesn't require drilling any new holes for the airbags. A lot of the Firestone kits, that's the way that they make them, is so that you don't have to drill any holes and you can use existing ones. And that's the way it is for this one. And here it is on the passenger side. It looks pretty much the same. Now, one thing I do want to mention, and I'm thinking it's because these clamp the springs together, because there was the, there were gaps here in between the springs before you uh, clamp all this together. It does make the ride a little bit stiffer. The airbags are only run with five PSI in them, so I don't think that's the issue. I'm pretty certain it's clamping all these springs together, makes the ride a little bit stiffer. So be aware of that. This side also has an extra piece of metal that clamps into there for a heat shield because the exhaust runs on this side. So hopefully that was a quick look at airbags on a Tacoma. I'm sure there's a lot of questions out there about them. So I want to close this video out with a couple of suggestions that you might want to take into consideration. The airbags themselves don't come with the compressor kit generally. There'll be links in the description for whatever I can find. To run the airbags, you don't have to have a compressor kit. It just makes it more convenient. You can just have air chucks put wherever. Mine are actually in the bumper here on either side of the license plate. And you can uh, air them up like that. I put them in as a safety measure in case the air compressor fails. As far as the air compressor goes, I set it up like this because I wanted that extra chuck in the bed. If you don't want to do that, then I really suggest going with one of Firestone's wireless systems. Airlift also has a system, they also have a wireless system, and you wouldn't have to run anything inside the truck, which makes it a million times easier for the install, like a million. I had to run airlines inside the truck, several airlines, and they're not small, so it gets kind of cramped, it gets really tight, and it's kind of difficult. So if you just need the airbags, go with the wireless system. I could have also done the wireless system in a different way because the wireless system will con control each individ individual airbag. What I could have done is I could have plumbed the airbags together so one channel would have controlled, the, controlled both airbags and then the second channel would have con controlled the air truck. Uh, when you do do that, is the truck can lean and when it leans it'll compress this side and allow the air from this side to transfer over to this side which allows everything to lean more and when you're towing a load it can be a little bit less stable and that's the whole reason we do it right is because we want to carry a load whether you're overlanding or you're like me and towing a fifth wheel or a camper or whatever you're doing we want stability so when they are plumbed together, it still allows that lean and the transfer of air back and forth. So that would be the downside for setting it up with the wireless system in my situation. But if you don't need that extra air truck, go with the wireless system. It would be a whole lot easier. There's less plumbing, there's less wiring. It's just easier, trust me. The wireless system, even has like a bracket with the compressor and all the wireless components and you just bolt that to the side of your frame, run power to it, run the plumbing to the airbags, but nothing's going on the inside of the truck except for a little remote. So I hope this helps some of you out there. I've seen a lot of questions. Uh, I've seen some posts and forums. Uh, I'll probably try and share this video in those forums as well to help all of you guys out that have questions about that. And it's made a huge difference. My last Tacoma, my 2002, I did that even before I had the trailer because I had a camper shell. And when I went camping, I would load that sucker up side to side, front to back and top to bottom, and as well as having a rack back here with other stuff, a generator and a grill and whatever else. So there was a whole bunch more weight on the rack. So just doing the airbags in that setup made a world of difference in handling when I'm driving with all that weight. So even if you're just an overlander, maybe think about doing something like this, but 
um, the concern would be how much the suspension can extend at that point. And I can tell you that the Firestone do limit that. When I had to drop the suspension down to do uh, other things, I had to unbolt the airbags. Like I said that it's good for overlanding, but it may not be if you go into some really crazy places. So just keep that in mind. Um, airlift might have some systems that will work better, but I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with the airlift systems. But I know that I'm familiar with the Firestone and I do like them and I do recommend them. And if you're interested in more Tacoma videos, I have a whole Tacoma playlist. That's not the only thing I do on this channel. It's a do-it-yourself uh, do type of channel. So my projects vary, but I do have a Tacoma playlist. So if you're curious, go and check those videos out and we will catch you guys on the next one. See ya.